Hey, welcome back, or if this is your first time to the channel, Noped Thursday, just welcome. Hope you're having a great day. I've been receiving a few questions about QT50 gears and PW50 gears, and whether they make a difference and what kind of a difference they make. So, um, the... Uh, Right back here is the rear differential, if you can follow my pointer there. And those are the gears that we're talking about. However, we're also talking about the complete gear system, uh, which is composed of three sets of gears in the uh, QT50. Let me uh, pull up a QT50 right side shot. Oh, that's a small picture. That's not nice. Well, anyways, you've got what I call uh, the main gear off of the crankshaft and the clutch. Let's pull up, uh, pull up a picture of that. So, I don't know, I'll call this the main gear here where my uh, crosshairs are. And then that uh, drives the clutch. And pull up a picture of the clutch is the one has the bell over it but this is the uh, the exposed side of the clutch so that's one set of gears and then we have the uh, QT50 output shaft Let's see if I can get this in here can't well maybe I can reduce it a little more a little more a little more and let me think here how is this set up I think we go from, uh, if this is the front of the bike, from here to there, and that drives the, uh, I guess it would be the drive shaft, right? And finally, that drive shaft connects to, well, that's not the one I wanted. Let's try this. Move you over. The ring, which is this circular gear, and pinion gears. And the ring and pinion gears are the ones that we can interchange between the QT50 and the PW50 to change the gear ratio. Uh, and I've got another video which I'll link to in the description showing the process of swapping the PW50 gears uh, for the QT50 gears. So let's just, so we've gone over the three sets of gears on the QT50. And again, uh, the main gear and the clutch are located where the crosshairs are there. And then this little portion here is are the output gears. Then we've got the drive shaft leading to the pinion and finally the ring gear covered by that circle. So now that we know what we're talking about, let's get into the math, a little moped math, or maybe I should say noped math, uh, going over the QT50 versus the PW50 rear gears. So if we go back to the clutch, Remember, we were just, uh, just looking at that right here. We've got these two gears here. This one has 33 teeth. The smaller one has 33 teeth. And the bigger one under the clutch bell has 63 teeth. So uh, the driven gear has 63 teeth. And we divide that by the drive gear, which has 33 teeth. Then we go over to the output shaft. We're going to multiply the first gear ratio times the second gear ratio, which is the output shaft. Remember, we were just looking at that. I'll try it. Well, I'm not going to reduce it, but there's the output shaft. On the left side, we have 15 teeth versus 19 teeth. So 19 is the driven side, 15 is the drive side. And finally, we have the ring and pinion gears. The ring gear, and those are in the very back, uh, 
the ring gear is you know right next to the rear wheel there or the hub rear hub that has 57 teeth versus uh, 10 teeth on the pinion gear so if we divide all that out we're getting 1.91 times 1.27 times 5.7 so the QT50 has an overall gear ratio from the three sets of gears comprised of six total gears of 13.83 to 1. Let's just put that there, 2, 1. Now, if we put the PW50 ring and pinion gears, these right here on, that's the only thing we're changing. So we still have the... Uh, still have the uh, same gears, main gear and clutch, still have the same output shaft, and then we're just changing the ring and pinion gear. The ring has 54 teeth and the pinion gear has 11, so that is a 4.91 gear ratio at the rear differential, changing our entire gear ratio to 11.91 to 1. So, now that we've got the gear ratios, we can move on. Um, now, the tire diameter is going to vary because if you've been watching my videos, I've pointed out several times, of course, I've got <laughs> hundreds of videos, so maybe you haven't watched them all. But, um, if you have a standard 14-inch tire, uh, basically that means a 14-inch rim, you can have variations in tire width and height. And I guess what I've always been saying is uh, the wider the tire is the taller the tire is so somewhere on the internet I found that the standard tire circumference for a QT50 is 1422 millimeters which is the same as almost 56 inches now circumference is how far the wheel travels in one revolution or I guess uh, the distance around the wheel and uh, that might you know I forget what the stock QT50 tire is is it 14 by two and a quarter inches wide I think so and as as we know we can also put on 14 by two and a half inch tires so we get a quarter inch wider or a popular tire is the uh, IRC NC, is it the 77 or 75? I forget off the top of my hand. So many numbers going on here, you have to forgive me. But uh, that's almost two and three quarter inches wide. That's going to be a taller tire than the stock tire of two and a quarter inches wide. So you know the tire circumference can change which is going to affect the overall result here because we're going to get into a formula um, and I'll show you that in a minute where we use the gear ratio and miles per hour to determine what kind of RPM we have to turn to get there but anyways the standard formula for circumference is uh, 2 pi r and uh, and I've gone ahead and calculated calculated the diameter of a 1,422 millimeter tire or a 56 inch tire to have a dyna diameter of 17.82 inches, and and we need this number for our formula, which I'm revealing now. So the formula is RPM equals miles per hour times your gear rate ratio times a constant of 336 divided by the tire diameter in inches. So, all right, why, 
Why won't you go up further? You've got, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> um, I tell you what, I'm going to. All right, now we've been we've been able to move down to see the rest of our screen. So, you know, let's let's work with the 50 mile an hour. Uh, speed here and uh, with the QT50 gear ratio so the stock QT50 gears we've got the 13.83 uh, gear ratio times 336 divided by the tire diameter and in inches so basically to do 50 miles an hour with QT50 stock gears you have to turn about 13,000 RPM and that's a whole lot of RPM. Um, now, personally, I think I have to measure. I'm gonna have to measure my tires, but I, I think they're a bit bigger than 17.82 inch diameter. I think they're more like 18 and a half. But I'll do that uh, later, I guess, and report in the description. Uh, what my tires were. I'm here at the office. I don't have access to that. But anyways, um, we'll just assume this is a standard stock tire. Uh, now, what's the difference if we go to the PW50 gears? Right Here's our PW50 gear ratio. So again, 50 miles an hour, you know, what kind of RPMs do we have to turn to do 50 miles an hour with an 11.91 gear ratio? Survey says just over 11,000 RPMs. And, and that pretty much corresponds with my experience. I think I did it at 10,850 RPMs, with the difference being that the diameter of my rear tire was slightly longer than this 17.82 inches. So almost a 2,000 RPM difference to do 50 miles an hour from stock QT50 gears to PW50 gears. And that's pretty huge. Uh, the most RPMs I've ever turned on the QT50 is, uh, like I said, 10,850. I think that was slightly more than 50 miles an hour, you know, 50 point something. Uh, you know, I could see probably being able to bump that up 500 or 1,000, you know, to get close to 11,500 or uh, 12,000 RPM. You know, 13,000 plus RPMs is a heck of a lot to push on a QT50 engine. Uh, at least, you know, with what I'm familiar with. Can it be done? It probably could be done. Uh, I don't know, you know, if you're going to get uh, much higher than that. So just for fun, let's, let's pop in. Let's, what would it take to do 55? miles an hour. So we'll change that to 55 with PW50 gears. Let me do, I'll do the math here, off screen, 55 times 11.91. Whoops. 55. Clear, all clear. 55 times 11.91 times 336 divided by 17.82 equals 12,351 RPM to do 55 miles an hour. That, you know, that's not outrageous, um, especially if, let's just bump this slightly. Let's just say 18.25 inches 
which I think is still within the realm of, uh, well within the realm of possibilities. Divided by 18.25 equals, so we drop it down uh, almost 300 RPMs by just going to a tire that's uh, less than a half an inch longer in diameter. Now, of course, the other thing is, you know, tires get kind of heavy the fatter they get. Uh, they actually get real heavy. Because I tried the uh, 80 90 tire on the, uh, on the uh, QT50, and it rubbed. I think it was if it was perfectly true, it might have worked, but the thing was ridiculously heavy compared to the 7090 IRC tire. Um, and so 70 millimeters is 2.75 inches. So another uh, 10 millimeters is a little less than half an inch. You're talking almost, I don't know, 3.1, 3.2 inch wide tire. I'm not sure what the diameter of that would be, but uh, it'd be something to figure out. But uh, anyways, um, there you go. So what, what else did I, uh, was there anything else I wanted to calculate before I sign off here? I, I, of course, this has probably gone on way too long, right? I'll just end it there. If you have your questions, put it down in the comments below, and I'll be happy to follow up. Thanks for watching.